Hello folks and welcome to the new semester and its online presentation of the Introduction to Social Welfare. This is a cross-listed course between the Social Work and Human Services Department at UAA in Anchorage. Um, and so we actually have students enrolled from both departments, which really brings a different kind of a perspective into this course in that Although human services and social work training is very similar in many ways, there may also be some differences in that that lend some different perspectives on the topics that we're going to be discussing during the semester. All in all, I think it, it makes the course much more lively, and I'm looking forward to this semester. We have a very full class, a little over uh, the limit, in fact, for the beginning of the semester, but uh, that's that's quite okay. I think we can accommodate a few extra voices here and there. And so... As we go into this course, I um, just want to mention to you that I think this class is uh, one of the more uh, interesting classes that you might run into in the course of your of your study in the human services and social work field. I say that because you may go into it thinking that it's going to be rather dry and perhaps somewhat boring, in fact, but you're going to find it's quite different from that. In fact, issues related to social welfare are almost constantly in the news, and uh, one of the things you'll be doing during the course of the semester is tracking that in a current events kind of style, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later. And and you'll begin to see how it is that, that uh, social welfare and social welfare clients are very much in the forefront of the discussions in terms of both social justice and politics and many other ways of, of viewing current events. And so uh, you will notice as the semester goes along that this, this topic is very much alive and well in the news around you. We'll be uh, working uh, through a few different textbooks. One of them will take us through what is something of a historical view of the development of social welfare policy in the United States. Don't be frightened off by that or or worry too much about it, it uh, being too dry because it will quickly become more relevant as the semester goes along. At the same time, we're going to be have we're going to have another text which is going to give us a more contemporary view of social welfare and actually deals with the experiences of the clients in the social welfare system itself. And so, I think you'll find this course to be um, quite relevant for your training and also something that will be of interest as uh, as you go along. My name is Bill Gaelic. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in the state of Alaska. I retired from Child Protective Services some months ago, and uh, now I'm living the life of a part, a full-time part-time instructor, I guess is what you'd want to say. Um, so I really have a little more time to uh, uh, give to the class than I used to have in, when I was kind of squeezing all of this work into the weekends while I worked full-time. I have myself, and, and you can see more about this if you uh, go through some of the um, information I posted in, in the Blackboard course, but um, I have about 40 years social work experience. I have a bachelor's degree in social work from Michigan State and a master's degree in social work from Florida State, um, and um, as I said, I have about 40 years of practice in the field. My experience has taken me through public welfare programs, food stamp certification, residential care and treatment of children and adolescents, uh, outpatient mental health services, and inpatient psychiatric hospital, working some with the court system in uh, several different states, and finally working in child protection in two different states uh, as well. And so I think the range of my experience in my work history uh, lends itself well to the to this course and to the presentation of all the different topics you're going to be studying. And I hope that I can bring some of the real to real life situations that I've, I've experienced uh, to, to your training some here in this class. You'll see that my contact information is here on this slide. My email address at the university is the one that the university actually prefers us to use when we communicate with each other. But I can also tell you that the second email address, which is my home email address, is also private. No one else checks that email. And so you can feel confident that whichever email address you uh, write to me at, uh, that, uh, that will be between you and me. I do check my home email address more frequently than I check the university address, but I try to make it a point to make sure that I stay on top of my 
my um, university emails as well. And it's something that I'll be talking with you about that I need you to do during the course of the semester. You can also contact me at my phone numbers uh, listed here, and, and it's also on the syllabus in the course. Um, but again, I think the most reliable and efficient way to reach me is through email. So we have different texts for the for the class. There's actually three texts that you or books that you'll be working out of. This particular text, The New History of Social Welfare, the seventh edition, please be sure you do have the seventh edition, is written by Phyllis Day and Jerome Scheel. This is the text that we will orient the course around so that the outline of the course and the structure of the course really kind of follows the pattern that's set up by the chapters in this particular textbook. I've been teaching this class for probably close to 25 years now and uh, I have used a few other textbooks. This was the first one that I actually used. It was used by another instructor with UAA before I had started teaching this class and I used it because it had been used previously and I found it to be a good a good a good book to work out of. I tried a few others and just wasn't nearly as satisfied with the con content of those textbooks and so I've come back to this twice. This book uh, Dr. Day is uh, uh, probably getting up in years at this point and I think that's why she has a co-author now who's uh, doing the most recent updates but I can tell you, uh, when you read this book, it won't take you long to understand that she is a feminist writer. She has a feminist perspective on social welfare. Now, I will tell you that both for men and women, sometimes the material that she presents becomes difficult. And I want you to um, kind of hang in there with that and, and try to understand what it is that she's saying, because her, her perspective is really very, very accurate and, and right on the money. Um, in it's going to stir you up some, no matter which gender you belong to, but that's okay. In fact, that's really what I want in a textbook, particularly in a textbook that could potentially be dry, is, is to have you stirred up and to, and to get you thinking about these topics. And so I think you'll find by the end of the semester that while she may have uh, presented some thoughts to you that might have been provoking and to you and, and uh, upset you somewhat, nonetheless, you'll, you'll have learned a lot because of the way she presents this material. So that's the first text in the, in our um, in our series. And the next one is um, a book written by Karen Seacom. So you think I drive a Cadillac? This book presents the perspectives of welfare recipients that are currently in the system, and also talks a little bit about the reform of the social welfare system that was implemented uh, during the Bill Clinton administration. That was sort of called the welfare to work welfare to work uh, program, and um, how successful that was. Karen Seacom will address that and, and uh, will draw some important conclusions about that for you. This, uh, this book really is one that I think provides the um, modern day perspectives on things and helps you understand a little bit about what all this policy and, and theory uh, does to the individuals that, that actually live within the system and also give you an idea how it is that uh, people wind up in the system and sometimes get stuck there. Now most everyone comes to the course with some ideas about public welfare recipients. Usually those ideas are not positive um, and some of this has to do with what we hear in the media and what we hear from um, our parents and other people around us and you know you, you people complain about for instance you know about the the waste of taxpayer money let's say on people who who won't work or won't get a job people advocate for drug testing of, of welfare recipients because they're living on taxpayer money those kinds of things and I think as the semester goes along you're going to find some of these views and perspectives that you've developed over the years to be challenged and I hope that that does happen if you're coming into this not really having your own ideas about things, but kind of more or less living off of the ideas that others have given you as you've grown up or as you've listened to other people talk. What I hope is by the end of the semester, whatever your perspective is on this topic, it's your own perspective. It's not one that was fed to you by someone else because we are fed opinions by the media and by, again, significant people in our lives, particularly during our upbringing, that we need to step back from and challenge ourselves and make our own choices and decisions. And so this book, I think, will help you get there and will be is actually a very good, uh, very good ancillary text along with the Phyllis Day book. This little book, The Jungle, 
Well, you see here, it was published over 100 years ago first. And uh, by the way, th this cover, there can be any number of covers in this book, and you can get any number of editions of this book. Just please be sure you get the unabridged version. Don't get one that's shortened, uh, but get the full uh, unabridged did I say don't get the unabridged version? Get the unabridged version um, so that there isn't any shortcuts in the text because you do want to read the whole book. Um, this book is one of those books that kind of starts out the first 50 to 100 pages. Uh, there's a wedding ceremony and there's a lot of detail in it and and um, you kind of get lost in that but the book will pick up and actually becomes very I would say melodramatic as as the book goes along. The author Upton Sinclair was one of the individuals that were referred to as muckrakers. You may remember that from your American history courses in high school. These are individuals 100 years or so ago who were writing literature to try to get people to recognize um, the social ills in our society to come to to come to see, expose some of the problems in our in our society at that time a hundred years or so ago uh, perhaps the division between the wealthy and the poor was even greater than it is today and and it was in danger of, of running rampant before a few different things happened in our history that we'll be talking about that kind of reined in some of that but uh Poverty was was very extreme in those days, and and wealth was very extreme in those days. This book talks about what what the experience of the immigrants are uh, who came to here mostly from Europe um, around the turn of the last century. Those individuals came here um, thinking, you know, literally that the streets of America were paved with gold. I mean, they were hearing these these stories about all the wealth in America and everything, not realizing that. And the belief was that if we only work hard enough, we will attain that wealth ourselves. Everybody, every common person can become wealthy. Uh, that was the belief, and that's what brought a lot of immigrants here. And, of course, that wasn't the case. And, and uh, the hero of this book, Jurgis Rudkus, learns that. And and uh, you kind of walk with him through the lessons uh, about capitalism and its effects on the worker in this book. Upton Sinclair was a socialist. And... During this period of time, if you know your world history, of course, the socialist movement was becoming very big in 1917, just a few years after this book was published. The Bolsheviks, who were the socialists, overthrew the Tsar in Russia, and there were many uh, political influences going throughout Europe that uh, helped to shape the governments in those nations into much more of a socialist kind of a system, even though they're still capitalist systems. They have a lot more socialist flair to their to the way they govern. Um, the ocean seems to have somehow insulated America from a lot of those changes, although there was a lot of fears during this period of time that socialism was going to take over America in America as well. And in fact, um, there was there was a a presidential candidate, uh, Eugene Debs, who actually began to garner quite a few votes, although um, somehow conveniently we wound up finding him in jail during his last few presidential campaigns. Long story, we'll be talking about that later in the semester. This book kind of brings all of this in, and so there's a lot of uh, social information, and if you understand the politics of the time, um, it, it's really um, it's really a very lively book and, and again will fit in very well with what we're studying when we get to this. So more about that in a, in a few slides. By the way, this book I think is available at different sites for free download. I think um, I think Amazon has it for a free download in, in Kindles and uh, so you might want to check that site. Again, make sure you get the unabridged version however. So the course syllabus is available in the in the um, um, Blackboard shell. If you haven't already gotten that, you should have printed it out by now. Please make sure you print it out and go through it um, page to page and make sure you understand everything that's in that. It is your responsibility. Uh, and this is sort of my presentation to you about uh, what it is you're going to learn and how we're going to do that. Um, one of the things you want to make note of, even though this is an online course, your participation is going to be graded, and I have ways of being able to do that because Blackboard lets me know when you've been in the course working and those kinds of things. And it will also, well, again, we'll talk a little bit more about what participation means in, in a few slides, but just be sure to read your syllabus very carefully as, as we go along. You're going to earn your points in this course. There are 720 points total that are available to you, or that are possible, let's say, uh, and here's how those points are earned, and we're going to go through the slides now one by one to talk about each of these categories so that you understand what it is you have to do in order to attain points here. 
the grading scale is um, if you take 720 points and divide it by or rather multiply it times 0 0.90 90 percent you'll find out what the bottom number of points you can get to have an A and so on down here so the grading scale is the standard grading scale that the university makes use of in most all of its classes and I will also say the syllabus has uh, has it broken down by points as well so take a look at the syllabus if you have any questions about that there's a sort of a common joke about social workers not being not being very good at math so I have it broken down for you in the syllabus if you need that so your points will be earned through your steady and regular involvement in the course and I can see that not only by when Blackboard tells me you've been in there but also by the posts that you put in um, if you are actively engaging in discussion boards and and really putting in good journal entries and if you are fully engaged in the group project that you're going to have and those kinds of things all of those kinds of things are going to go together and if you if you do participate fully in the course you can figure you're going to get 50 points if if you um, you know, if you're less enthusiastic about it, if you skip a lot of posts here and there and things like that, you'll get less points than 50. The discussion boards, uh, every week through um, uh, an item in your course menu called the weekly course content, you will be able to get a link to a discussion board forum. And most weeks, there will be one discussion board question, just one. And um, they will be based upon what you're reading, mostly, uh, or topics associated with what you're reading. And so um, you will have a, a new discussion board question open on a Sunday morning. And by the following Sunday night, you're to make a, uh, an original post in response to the question, post the discussion board uh, of at least 150 words. And we're, I really encourage you to write more than that, but at a minimum 150 words for your, for your response. And then a few days later, you're to go back into the into the uh, discussion board read some of your classmates posts and respond to those posts and so in order to get your full 10 points each week for the discussion board question you should make an original post original response to the question and then respond to two classmates posts by you know in sort of engaging in discussion with them and so your original post plus two responses earn you 10 points each now the the discussion board is as a public post and that doesn't mean anybody from outside the class can read it but everyone within the class whether they're participating in the discussion with you or not can actually read what you post so um, so this is a public post and this is really something that I intend for students to be communicating with each other about on these topics I read these posts I grade them so I have to monitor them anyway but I read them as well and occasionally I will make some posts and chime in, in in the discussions as well but this is really mostly for you the students to participate in and so you won't find me making uh, making posts in the discussion boards all the time I will from time to time but uh, there's another place where we'll be talking more directly more regularly um, Every now and then, instead of having one discussion board question, there will be two for the week, and you can earn extra credit points. I think that will happen three times during the semester, so that would give you up to 30 points extra that you can earn through discussion board responses, a, a second discussion board response. Now, I just want to tell you that in a week where there are two discussion board questions, you can choose one or both. Um, neither one of them is the extra credit one. Uh, neither one of them is the primary one. So you can respond to one and get your 10 points and that's fine in the grade center it's going to show up if you only respond to one of them it's going to show up with zero points and I have to explain this frequently during the semester uh, to, to students that don't catch what I'm saying right now that doesn't mean you get a zero it just means you don't get any points because you didn't respond okay remember those are extra credit and so if you if you responded to one and you got your 10 points there you got full credit for that for that week if you want extra points you do the second question okay more on that later next there's going to be a link in the weekly course content for you to do a current events post and this is in a journal style this is a private post that only you and I read so other students don't read this and I do this for a couple of reasons but one of them is to give you an opportunity to kind of maybe let your hair down a little bit more and you know I'm not saying 
I want inappropriate posts or anything because I do want them to be appropriate and professional and, you know, suitable for the educational environment. But, but it gives you an opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, come to me with any questions or concerns you may have about the topic or to be a little more direct about what you're thinking about the particular topic. Now, this is where I will most always respond to your post. And so if you, when you make your response in the journal to, um, uh, to uh, the, the current event that you select, I'll respond to that, and um, you can choose to respond to that as well. I'll, I will, Blackboard will tell me if there's more discussion, and I'll go back and read it and respond again if you like. But really, um, th this is a twofold purpose to this journal entry. One of them is it's for current events, and so you are to go out and find something related to social welfare or civil rights in the in the media, whether it's a story in the in the news or in a newspaper or in a magazine magazine on the web, uh, something you find on Facebook, you know, whatever it might be, but it, it should be related to social welfare, civil rights, those kinds of things. Okay, something suitable for the course. And um, you will make a brief uh, you make a brief summary of the article. You tell me where, what article you're quoting, and then give me a reaction of about 150 words or more to that particular topic, and then I'll respond to that. So that's also worth 10 points. And so between the discussion board every week and the journal every week, there's 20 points total, or 280 points for the semester of that 720 will be for the journals and the discussion boards. More about this. If you're confused, just hang in there. It'll become more clear to you. There is a category, in fact, uh, in the uh, course uh, menu, uh, an item in the course menu called board and journal grading guidelines or something close to that. And I really strongly encourage you to click on that. There are four or five different slides there that answer a lot of the questions you're going to have about both how you get points in discussion boards and in journals and what makes a good journal entry, what makes a good discussion board entry, those kinds of things. Um, if you ask me questions that are answered there, I'm more than likely going to ask you to read that. And then if you're not sure, come back to me. So please try to read these, that item first. That That's why it's there. In... Um, in this week's learning unit also, there is uh, an item, a slide that will say how your posts will earn points, which will also um, also talk about that some. And I just want to mention, by the way, if anywhere in, in, um, in the um, course you find me referring to blogs, um, what I'm really talking about are journals because we I used to use a blog tool and I've started using a journal tool and um, I haven't entirely rid myself of the use of that term blog and so if you see blog just it means journal that's not another thing going on so you get 50 points up to 50 points for a paper three to six pages it's a really a short paper it's sort of a commentary after you've read the jungle it's paper a full credit paper will summarize the book briefly I don't need you to tell me everything that happens in the book because I know that but just something that tells me that you've read the book that that, that you know you know what's in there um, what your reaction was to the book and tie whatever you tie it into course concepts you know things that you learned in the course up to that point we're gonna do this in week six so it's still gonna be fairly early in the semester but you'll have a lot of foundation principles by then and so a good paper will do all of those things and three pages uh, will be sufficient uh, no more than six pages, please. And you, you'll the, an item will uh, turn up in the course menu for assignments, and you'll submit that uh, that document through there as a Word document through the assignments uh, link. The big project during the semester is a. Um, a group project that you and one or two other classmates, it depends on how many people we have and how I divide it up, will be assigned to a position on a controversial topic related to social welfare or civil rights and those things. And, um, and um, you will research um, um, one side of the of the discussion. So the, you'll be given a question, say for instance, you know, should... Um, should minors be permitted to, to have an abortion without parental consent? Just say that's one question. Actually, it's one that I've used in past semesters. Probably won't this semester. but um, And so two or three of you will be assigned to the yes side of that discussion, and you'll be to... You, your intent is to research that, your assignment is to research it, and put your findings together uh, for half of the paper. The other, another one or two students will be assigned to the no side of that, okay? So the, the yes and the no's together make your group. And you put 
your paper together with the format that I spell out for you um, and um, you put this together with one paper that will that all four or five of you will present at one time to me and will be graded together and so your your grading is really going to kind of rise and fall together now I'm going to tell you every time every semester there's always one or two students who are real procrastinators or who don't really like writing papers or uh, difficult personality perhaps or something like this and, and uh, groups don't always work together smoothly and I just have to say that in the social work and human services profession one of the things that we have to be able to do is to learn how to function in groups when we have contrary people or we have slackers and so um, I have some ideas for you that that you'll that you'll get from me as the time comes but but don't don't uh, think this is a failure if if the group uh, has some problems because really that's a part of the growth experience here for you in this class but you're gonna find uh, those of you who really want to get things done quickly you'll be panicking on this that it's going on last minute I've never had a semester go by where uh, any group didn't turn in a paper you'll get the paper turned in and your paper will wind up being much better than you think it will be at some point I'm sure but uh, anyway, this is something we'll be talking about more. I will give you your topics uh, probably three or four weeks into the semester. I, I'm going to wait a little while to do that because I want to make sure that the people that I assign to groups are, are likely actually to be participating because usually I lose a few people in the first few weeks of the semester and I need some time to see who's sort of dropping out and who isn't. This is 150 points total. You're going to write one paper together, 12 to 15 pages in length. So um, more about that as, as the time comes up. But uh, once the papers are completed, you will submit it uh, to me through Blackboard. I will grade it and return it to you in Blackboard. And I will then also take your ungraded paper and I'll post it in a discussion board forum. And um, your classmates then will be able to read that, will read that paper and you'll participate in a discussion about that okay so that uh, you know everybody will get a chance to read everybody else's paper and provide input in not about the quality of the paper so much as but about the topic and and so really you get an opportunity to interact around each other both in terms of building your paper and then with the whole rest of the class around the topic itself and so and and around their topics as well and this is something that uh, it's that that's all going to unfold in the last month where this discussion goes on but uh, it's something that I think you'll find will be uh, something you take away from the course that uh, will be valuable to you now a few of you have had uh, um, online courses with me previously and um, so I, there are some differences with this perhaps if you took 206 this is there's a different format for this than than what I do in 206 uh, if you had 101 so sociology 101 with me it's a very similar format but uh, there will be some differences so uh, just be sure when the time comes that you read all of the directions again I'll give you a course uh, uh, rather a course menu item that says uh, group project uh, instructions and grading guidelines or something like that so that you'll know fully how you are to format your cor your uh, paper and uh, what you can do to get the full credit. There are two tests during the semester. The first one is about I don't know week seven I think or something like that. It's mid-semester somewhere. It's in the syllabus where where it will be given and it's a 40-point test. It'll be multiple choice or true false. It will be questions from both the day shield text and from the cecum text the second test will be at the end it will be worth 60 points and uh, w although it will cover the entire semester it will be weighted more heavily towards the second half of the semester questions from that again on both of those texts now the way uh, I do tests is that um, let's say the test one opens in week seven it won't Week seven will open on a Sunday morning, but you won't see the test until that Thursday because uh, I want you to take two or three days and work through the material before you think about taking the test. I don't want you going in and taking the test right away. So on Thursday of the week that it opens, the test will appear in that weekly course content, and then you will have uh, until two Sundays later to take that test. So you have 11 days in order to go in there and take that test, and you take the test right in Blackboard. You don't have to go anywhere to take it. You don't doesn't have to be monitored. Um, you know, I don't need anybody proctoring it for you. Uh, it can be open book. I ask that you take your own test. 
and in fact each of you uh, will will get different tests because blackboard has a, a whole pool of questions and so every time you take the test and everybody that takes the test gets a, sep a different set of questions and so so you're not all getting the same test by any stretch of the imagination but the only thing is is you're on the honor system to do your own work but uh, you can use you can do open book with that um, it is a time test and and so it's not like you can sit around for all day looking for the answer you're going to have to know where the answers are and so you really do need to read things before you uh, before you go in to take the test um, anyway and also when you take the test the first time and you don't like your your result you can go back in later T take it a second time or you can do it right away go back in and take it again and the higher of your two scores will be the one that counts you can only do that you can have one retake but uh, but you can do uh, an additional one if you want so once the test has closed however the test is closed and so you have to take it during that 11 day period and if you don't it won't be available again you'll you'll have to really work to get your uh, extra credit points I guess when you can to kind of make up for some of the ones you've missed so those extra credit points, you'll find three discussion board questions, additional discussion board questions during the course of the semester. More, you know, from not right away, but later on probably. Um, and so you can earn up to 30 extra points by doing those extra discussion boards. That's 30 points over and above the 720 points total. So if you got all 720 points possible in the course and did three discussion boards for um, full credit 10 points each you know you could have 750 points and that's like what 110 percent pretty good when you open the course it opens to the announcements page and you should always check and see if there's a new announcement there because this is how I communicate with you we don't get together you know we don't have um, we don't sit down together at any time we don't, uh, this is an asynchronous, asynchronous course entirely, which means that there's no time when we have a meeting. Um, so this is where I would say to you, I, I have a few things I need to announce first or something I need to tell you before we get started on class. That's in the announcements. And so always be sure to read the announcements. Make sure that, that you've seen it. Now, when I post an announcement, I will tell Blackboard also to send you an email. It will send it to your university address. I don't have control over where it goes, but that's where it goes. So this is why I say you should always check your university email account regularly and frequently. If you find announcements being posted that aren't getting to you at your university email address, then there's probably a, an issue with your university email address and you need to call IT at UAA and get that straightened out. And every now and then I'll get bounce back messages that some student isn't getting um, blackboard emails and it's up to you really to get in there and and um, get that corrected so watch for announcements always very important information but the most important link in your course menu is the weekly course content and uh, a new week's content will be available to you shortly after midnight on Sunday morning every week now there are several slides in every weekly course content um, I, I'd say probably at a minimum you'll find seven or eight slides sometimes as many as 12 or more and so be sure that you see all of the slides when you go to the discussion board for instance it takes you out of the out of the um, weekly course content and so you need to use your browser back button when you're done with the discussion board to get back into the weekly course content where you'll find the journal link and then you're going to find some other links after that so just be sure you have there there is a menu there is a menu every week and be sure you have seen every every slide in that menu so your weekly course content is where you will find well the objectives of the course you'll find what your reading assignments are for the week You'll find my lectures in the weekly course content. You'll find the discussion board link. You'll find the journal link. And you'll find uh, copies of the discussions or the, the lecture slides there. Your tests will be in weekly course content when they are there, etc., etc. Everything. This is all the content for the week. So you need to make sure you, you get in there and do this work. Now, there's a question uh, that often comes up about, you know, 
when do I have to do this? This is an online course. This isn't a correspondence course, and that's something that's very, very important for you to understand. This is this is an e-learning course, and that's different from correspondence. If you've ever taken a correspondence course, perhaps, um, you may get the material, the, the information you're supposed to work on all at the beginning of the semester, and you have the semester to finish it up and get it graded. You know, and so a lot of people will wait until two or three weeks at the end and then, and then do a binge study thing and turn it in. That won't work for this course, really. While there's flexibility for when you do your work, consider it to be within each week so that every week you should be completing uh, the work in each week's course content. You might choose to do all your work on Thursday, do some of it on Sunday, some of it on Friday. However you want to do that, you know, that's fine. It's up to you. But, but be aware of the deadlines for the materials that you have to submit. Get them submitted by that time. And, and just keep in mind your flexibility is within the week. It isn't all semester long. If you put off this work too long, you're going to find that you're not going to get grades for some of the work you turn in. Because, for instance, current events are current. And so you can't turn in a current event for February the 8th on April the 20th and expect to get credit for it. You know, likewise, the discussions that are going on, and, and you will have discussions with your fellow students, the discussions that are going on uh, will be going on um, during a, a week or two period. And so if there's a discussion board question from late January and you're trying to catch up and make extra points and you're, and you're responding in April, the discussion's done by then. You know, nobody's really paying attention to it anymore. And, and so it might be interesting that you've... Uh, read what some people said and made some comments on it but again you won't get very many points for that because it's too late you know and so please keep in mind your flexibility is within the week each week not not all semester long for those of you that have had other um online courses you know about netiquette and for those of you that is new I just this is a set of rules for behaving properly online there is a, uh, a slide pertaining to netiquette uh, in this week's course content I think I also have it uh, somewhere in the course menu as well but but really you know what's important to keep in mind here is is that online interactions uh, don't give us the opportunity to see how people are acting, how they look when they say something, and so all those nonverbal cues aren't there. Likewise, your tone of voice, you know, like if you're being sarcastic, for instance, you know, uh, and you're in a room with somebody, people can pick that up and they think it might be funny or not, I don't know, but, but you know, in writing and online, it's not going to be so obvious, and so keep that in mind and what you write understand people are going to be reading and taking pretty much literally so it's it's just keep in mind it's very easy to misunderstand what you say or to misinterpret um, to have those things misinterpreted and so um, remember that other people are reading what you write those people have feelings never never be abusive towards others never uh, verbally abusive you know never never be um, and what I'm, I mean, are we talking about being politically correct all the time? Maybe, maybe not. You know, I, I think there's a way to be open and direct about things uh, without necessarily being overly careful about political correctness. But you have to state things in a way that people can hear it and people aren't offended by it because if people are offended by what you say, they're not hearing what you're trying to do. And, and um, you know, students understand if anybody's making any comments that make them uncomfortable, um, that are offensive to them, abusive in any way, um, that you know, I I need to know about that, and I'll have to deal with that with it with the student making the comments. But but please don't don't make uh, derogatory comments about other people. Don't threaten people. Keep in mind that any group you may have an opinion about, there is probably somebody in your class that belongs to that group, and so always be respectful of others and be forgiving of other people's mistakes whenever you can. So uh, you don't you don't have a journal to uh, post in this week, just because I want to give you time to start scouting the news. And so your first journal entry will be in week two. But for week one, you do have a discussion board question. And and the the uh, when you get to the discussion board link, you'll see it'll tell you to write a post of about 150 words or so that tells us a little bit about who you are. I would encourage you to, if you're comfortable with this, to attach photographs. It doesn't have to be a picture of you. It can be. 
and that's fine if you, I, I, you know, it's wonderful. Actually, I put a face with a name, but uh, photographs of people that are important in your lives or things that are important in your lives or places you've been or things that you like, whatever it might be. Um, but feel free to, not only in your first post, but in any post, to put pictures in and, and just to illustrate things. But uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us an idea who it is that... Uh, that we're um, that you know that is going to be sitting at another computer somewhere reading what I write, um, and here's some ideas for things that you might talk about. Now, so you're going to make that post within the next week. By um, let's see, this is a, you know week one, so actually week two begins next Sunday morning, and so by next Sunday night you should have your original post in, and then by the following Thursday, that is ten days from from the beginning of week one uh, you should have gone back in and read a couple of your classmates posts and responded to them as well All right and uh, incidentally my uh, I will be grading them after um, those 10 days have passed so generally speaking in a week one discussion board question I will be grading discussion boards two weeks later like as week three opens up is when I'm in there reading the week one discussion board questions because I want everybody to have had an opportunity to put in all their posts before I grade them in a week ahead watch uh, the news for current events related to social welfare civil rights and some things that would might be um, you know the legislature is about to convene in in Juneau if if you're in Alaska and so that's something to pay attention to because there's going to be a lot of uh, discussion about especially with uh, potential budget cuts coming this year and everything about what programs are important and which ones aren't and and so watch the news for things about social programming the budget education civil rights racism sexism health care reforms a big issue Medicaid expansion immigration same sex marriage gay rights, on and on and on. Those kinds of things all are, you know, there's a lot of other topics that might be applicable as well. Um, there is a tendency sometimes to want to, uh, I, you know, every semester there's some story somewhere and usually in, you know, California somewhere or something like that where some mother was found to have you know, kept her seven children in a basement for 13 years and, you know, they've just been discovered and all this. And, and uh, you know, those stories have some kind of, I think, prurient kind of interest. I, um, and, and certainly for the people involved with them, it's a tragedy and, you know, it's a, a, an issue that needs to be dealt with. But really, for an ongoing kind of current events thing, it's really not something we need to follow. We want to try to try to make it constructive and not like we're kind of peeking in on on people that are have done some bizarre things, okay? So it's okay to mention those kinds of stories and to write a, to use them in a post, but let's not just follow them week after week after week. It seems to happen sometimes. So your first journal entry would be in week two. And again, you know, the, the uh, guidelines for that will be posted in the uh, board and journal grading guidelines link on the course menu. Um, when you're reading the day text to start out, uh, pay particular attention to the nine American values that she spells out in chapter one. This is a very important foundation concept that we will be referring back to throughout the semester. Week one and week two really give you some basic concepts for social workers and human services workers about services and, and, and our values and beliefs in this nation that are very important to, to understand. So pay attention to those nine American values and make sure you understand them. If you have any questions, please drop me a line and let me know. So that's all uh, to get you started. Again, I'm going to ask you to continue through the slides for this week. It's going to answer a lot of other questions you might have. Look through the um, board and journal grading guidelines slides also. If you haven't done the start here, please make sure you do the start here thing. Even if you've already taken a course with me, it doesn't hurt to do it again. And just be sure that you're aware of everything. You can write to me if you've got questions, and, and, and please do. Otherwise, um, you know, what you want to do is then next Sunday morning, um, you, or you can check, and you'll find a new weekly course content has start opened up with all new assignments and new, new lectures and new discussion boards and journals, okay? So that's it, and I appreciate uh, your patience in listening to me, and I hope that you find this course to be as intriguing as I think you will. I certainly enjoy teaching it and uh, look forward to working with you in the weeks ahead. Thank you.